Brepper Hop, the best Brepper and survival videos. How to survive a nuclear disaster. A nuclear war could take place in more ways you might think of, sparked by any number of occurrences from a pure accident to an international strike. This video describes what you can do before and following a nuclear attack. You can greatly increase your family and your own protection by watching this video. So let's get started by learning about the basics of a nuclear disaster. Now we must be ready for a new danger, the atomic bomb. Know the effects of a nuclear explosion. A nuclear explosion releases vast amounts of energy in three forms, light and heat, a blast and radiation. The amount of energy released depends on the size and design of the weapon. The effects depend on whether the weapon is exploded high in the air or on or near the ground. An air burst usually produces more fire and blast damage than a ground burst, which in the result is a big radar and more radioactive fallout. Light and heat. A blaze of light brighter than the sun is produced by a nuclear explosion. It lasts for about 15 seconds. Temporary brightness and eye injury can result from the glare if the eyes are not shielded. The heat rays from the explosion travel at the speed of light, or about 186,000 miles per second. It can start fires up to 20 miles away. Many fires are caused when the heat pulse comes through a window to set fire to curtains, paper, clothing and furniture. The heat flash can also set fire to outside wooden buildings. The following are some examples for the predictable effects on unprotected skin of the heat flash of a 5 megaton weapon that exploded on a clear day. Skin is badly burned up up to 50 miles from the explosion. Skin is blistered up to 80 miles from the explosion. Certain burn types of burns up to 23 miles from the explosion. You know how bad sunburn can feel. The atomic bomb flash could burn you worse than a terrible sunburn, especially where you're not covered. Nuclear explosions in the air rather than on the ground are more likely to produce a greater number of serious burns through the heat flash. Clothing will give some protection. A shield between you and the, and the light will give you protection against the burns from the heat flash. The blast. The blast wave travels more slowly than the heat flash. Several seconds may pass after you have seen the light or felt the heat before the blast wave reaches you, depending on the distance you are from the explosion. It's like the time between seeing the flash of a lightning and hearing the sound of the thunder. For example, at 10 miles from the center of an explosion, it will take about 35 seconds for the blast wave to reach you. If you are caught in the open during a nuclear explosion, this time can be used to fight some protection from the blast wave. You might be injured by being thrown away by the blast. Therefore, keep low. The greatest danger is from flying glass, bricks and other debris. The blast from a 5 megaton explosion could injure people as far away as 50 miles. Radiation. A nuclear explosion causes both immediate radiation and resteroid radiation. Immediate radiation is given up at the time of the explosion. It is dangerous only within 2 or 3 miles. If you were near the explosion with adequate protection that managed to survive the effects of the blast and fire, you could still be seriously affected by the immediate radiation. Residual radiation is given up by the radioactive particles left as fallout after the explosion. No effects about the radioactive fallout. If a nuclear weapon is exploded on or near the ground, the danger from radioactive fallout is the greatest. The force of an explosion may make a crater up to a mile wide and to a depth of 100 feet. Millions of tons of pulverized earth, stones, buildings and other materials are drawn up into the fireball and become radioactive. Some of the heavier particles spill out around to the point of the explosion. The rest are sucked up in the mushroom cloud. This radioactive material is then carried by the winds until it settles to earth. This is called fallout. Under some circumstances you may see the fallout. Under others you may not. The radioactivity it gives off and cannot be seen. You cannot feel it. You can smell it. But fallout doesn't come out of the sky like a gas and seep into everything. It can be best described as a fine to coarse scent carried by the wind. 
Because the wind direction varies at different heights above the ground, it's not possible to judge from the ground where the fallout will settle. It can settle in regular patterns, hundreds of miles from the explosion. The fallout of a 5 megaton explosion could affect seriously an area of 7000 square miles. If nothing were done to gain protection during the period of high radioactivity, there would be a grave danger to life in that area. There are four things which determine the amount of radiation reaching your body from fallout. 1. The time that has passed since the explosion. 2. The length of time you are exposed to fallout. 3. The distance you are from the fallout. 4. The shielding between you and the fallout. Time. The radioactive fallout weakens rapidly in the first hours after an explosion. This weakening is called decay. After 7 hours, the fallout has lost about 90% of its strength. After 2 days, it had lost 99%. And in 2 weeks, it has lost 99.9% .9 of its strength. Nevertheless, if the radiation at the beginning were high enough, the remaining 0.1% could be still dangerous. Radiation must be measured by special instruments handled by people trained to use them. But if you stay in a shelter during the first day after an explosion, you escape the strongest radiation. You should stay in a shelter until the radiation has been measured and you have been told over the radio that it's safe to come out. Distance. The strength of the radiation reaching your body is reduced by the further you are from the fallout. Here are some examples of the safest place to be when you are in various kinds of buildings. This is what to do if you should be in a corridor. You duck and cover tight against the wall this way. Remember to keep your face and the back of your neck covered tightly. Try to fall away from windows or doors with glass in them. Then, if the glass breaks and flies through the air, it won't cut you. You might be eating your lunch when the flash comes. Duck and cover under the table. Then, if the explosion makes anything in the room fall down, it can't fall on you. It's a bomb. Duck and cover. Paul and Patty know what to do. Patty all the time for the atomic bomb. Duck and cover. That's the first thing to do. Duck and cover. Shielding. The most effective protection is to place some heavy material between yourself and the fallout. The heavier the material, the better the protection. Many common materials give excellent protection. These thickness of materials will stop 99% of radiation. 16 inches of solid brick, 16 inches of hollow concrete blocks filled with mortar or sand, 2 feet of packed earth, 3 feet of loose, 5 inches of steel, 3 inches of lead, and 3 feet of water. A fallout shelter is the best way to protect your family and yourself against radiation because the time spent there is the period when the radiation is the most intense. By providing your family and yourself with the fallout shelter, you are unlikely to suffer serious effects from radioactive fallout. Personal danger from fallout. Radioactive particles in contact with your skin for a few hours may produce burns. Radioactive particles swallowed in food or water might be harmful. Radioactivity from an area of fallout may produce illness in the unprotected individual after a few days. Radiation illness develops slowly, it cannot be spread to other people. Except for temporary nausea, shortly after exposure, evidence of serious effects from radiation may only appear after an interval of from a few days or to three weeks. A combination of loss of hair, loss of appetite, increasing paleness, weakness, diarrhea, sore throat, bleeding, bleeding gums, and easy bruising indicate that the individual requires medical attention. Nausea and vomiting may be caused by fright, worry, food poisoning, pregnancy, and other common conditions. A radio is essential. When the attack warning sounds, you must take protective action. Take a battery powered radio with you, broadcast device, and instructions may help you to save your life. If you don't have a portable radio, turn up the volume of your house radio so it can be heard in your shelter. If away from home, you are forced to take emergency shelter and near a radio equipped vehicle, turn up the volume and open all vehicle doors or windows. Before attack, if science or warning system signal an impending attack, regardless of where you are or what you are doing, you must take the best available cover against the blast, heat and light effects of a nuclear explosion.
Emergency and broadcast instructions will include the following advice. 1. If you are at home, go to the basement or strongest part of your house or building, which offers the best protection. If material is handy, improvise the blast protection. 2. Take your battery radio with you, so that you can hear it well under cover. 3. Stay away from windows. 4. Lie down and protect yourself from flying glass and falling debris. 5. Shield your eyes from the flash of an explosion. 6. If you are away from home, take protective cover immediately. 7. If you are traveling, stop and take protective cover immediately. Or, if you are only a few minutes from safe destination, proceed and take protective cover immediately. 8. Listen to your radio for further instructions. After attack, if sirens or warning systems sound following nuclear attacks, the warning may mean other attacks or that radioactive fallout is approaching your area. You will be advised over the radio. If the advice concerns about fallout, you must take cover against the fallout effects. Radio broadcasts will identify areas which be affected by the radioactive fallout and will give instructions and advice. These might include 1. Location of nuclear explosion caused local fallout. 2. Information about the parts of the country to be affected by fallout. 3. Length of time before fallout is likely to reach specific communities or areas. 4. Ways to increase fallout protection. 5. Supplies to take to your fallout shelter. 6. Whether it's safe to stay in your community or area or to go to other areas. 8. Advice on when to leave shelters and for how long as danger from rate of contamination diminishes. 9. Requests for help in rescue operations such as rescue, firefighting and medical assistance. 10. Advice on conservation of food, water and fuel. 11. How to keep warm when power is off and the weather is cold. Don't use the telephone. When the siren sounds, don't use the telephone. Listen to a radio or television for information. In event of an attack, warning telephone lines will be required for official use. Improvised protection against the blast. One of the simplest ways to improve some anti-blast protection is to build a lean-to against a workbench or a heavy table, preferably in the basement, and a pile mattresses on it and at the ends. If the material is readily available, it could be built in a matter of minutes after the attack is sounded, and it could protect you from loose blicks, flying glass, and etc. If you are in the open and there is a ditch or culvert with an easy, quick reach, lie face down in it and cover your face with your arms. Make sure the shelter is not too close to buildings, which could collapse into it. After the blast and heat of the explosion, you would have to find another protection against the fallout, which will come down later. And don't forget your battery powered radio. None of these improvisations is as good as a properly equipped blast shelter, but any single of them could mean the difference between life and death. Improvised protection against fallout. You may not have a fallout shelter when a warning of an approaching fallout is broadcasted. Here are some tips on how to increase your protection in a basement. The amount of protection you can build will depend on how much time you have available until the fallout arrives. You can improvise a small emergency shelter by using furniture, doors, dresses, workbench and other materials. Select a corner of your basement, if possible, away from windows. Remove inside house doors from the hinges to use as a shelter roof over the supports. Supports for the improvised roof can be cabinets, chests of drawers, workbenches or anything which will bear a heavy load. Use the house doors as a roof surface to provide a base for the heavy materials you will have to place on it. Bricks, concrete blocks, sand filled drawers or boxes, books or other dense items on the roof will help to reduce radiation penetration. Around the sides and the front of your shelter, build walls of dense materials to provide vertical shielding. A small cabinet or dirt filled box as may be used as a crawl entrance which can be closed behind you. Remember, the heavier or more dense the material around you, the greater the protection. You can use block basement windows with earth bricks, concrete blocks, books or even bundles of newspaper. In the winter, use packed snow. If your home has no basement or crawl space, build your emergency shelter in that part of the house, the central hall or closet, farthest away from the outside walls and the roof. Build it as described for the houses with basements. 
On the floor immediately above your shelter and against the surrounding walls, piled up furniture, trunks, dressers, dirt filled boxes and other heavy materials, which will reduce the radioactive penetration in your emergency shelter. And as always, when you go in your shelter, don't forget your battery radio. Know how to get rid of radioactive fallout. So we described fallout as sand. These are particles of radioactive fallout. And this is how a single particle looks magnified several hundred times. A radioactive piece of matter from a nuclear explosion. To remove the danger, remove the sand. If you suspect that your clothes have fallout on them, remove the outer clothing before you come inside your home and leave it outside. Don't check this clothes inside the house or shelter. You would only scatter the fallout and create unnecessary danger to others. If you have water, as this might erupt in the radioactive particles. Exposure to fallout does not make you radioactive. Even if you are stricken with fallout sickness, the sickness cannot be passed to others. Fallout on your clothing or body would expose you and those close to radiation. If you suspect you have been exposed to fallout, you will not be in danger to others. If you carefully get rid of your outer clothing, outside the shelter and wash. Food and water. Since most of your food will be tightly covered in containers, cans, bottles, plastic and boxes, it will all be safe to drink food. If it's unspoiled and free of grit or dust, maybe eaten during the emergency period. Be sure to wash fruit and vegetables and peel carefully. Water will be safe if it's in covered containers or if it has come from covered wells or from undamaged water systems. So I hope you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like and as always I hope to see you in the next video.